What's up everybody and welcome back to the fifth episode of our F750 Crew Cab build series. In the previous episode, you saw us drop our 6.7 power stroke in the dent side, which means in today's episode, we're gonna build our custom transmission cradle, marry the transmission and the motor together, and finally have our powertrain for the vehicle mounted in its final resting place in the truck. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, first thing we need to do today is we are going to pull this motor back out. Unfortunately, we did crack the oil pan, and uh, I think it's because the mount is touching on the front, well, the back of the motor. So we're gonna pull that out. We're actually gonna be able to use the oil pan from the 2013, swap those over. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna grind down the back of the mount, which will allow us to have a little bit more play. We thought we had plenty of room. Turns out when you mount the transmission and the weight of it, it's actually rubbing just a hair bit. So we're hoping that by grinding down the back side of the mount, that that'll give us an adequate amount of space. So that way when the weight does send it back just a hair bit and set it in its final place, there won't be any rubbing or any touching because that could, that could cause a lot of issues further down the road. So there's nothing to it but to do it. So let's get after it. All right, you guys, we found our oil leak. You can tell, I don't know if you can see from the view, there's a crack right up this. You can see where we're scraping on our uh, motor cradle. And at the very top of it, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, there's a hairline crack. I'm trying to wipe it so you can check it out. Kind of right there. So, luckily we have another motor and we're gonna weigh our options um, to figure out if we just need to buy a replacement or if we can switch it over from the 2013. While Kyle's grinding that down, I wanna show you guys what the factory cradle looks like. And honestly, we should have paid more attention to this. I don't know if you can see that, but kind of from here, it starts sloping back towards the transmission and things like that. We didn't pick, that, uh, we didn't pick up on that. We thought everything was just straight across, um, kind of like the front, the front 90s really well. However, the back is the one that angles back, um, obviously, to allow space for the motor. And so that's kind of our fault. Um, we should have caught that, but we didn't. However, it is what it is. So Kyle's going to grind that down, and we will retest the motor and see if it works out. All right, you guys, update time. Kyle just grinded down the back of the mount. Uh, we think this is adequate amount that will help prevent the motor from touching it. But uh, now we're gonna bring the motor back in and hopefully it works. Hopefully there's no rubbing, but uh, only time will tell. So hopefully this is the last time we have to do this. But obviously we want it to be perfect. So if it isn't, it is what it is. So there's nothing to it but to do it. So after attempt number one, it was still rubbing a little bit, so we pulled it back out, grinded it down, sanded it out, and hopefully this go around is a little bit better. We are so close. That's why you can see that we only grounded it down uh, just in a specific area. The whole thing doesn't need to be shaved off, and so uh, we're pretty confident that this was the one. So Joe wanted me to give a little update what we're doing, um, but I don't really want to. I have a joke instead. Joe. Do you, do you know what those uh, jumpolines are? You know what a jumpoline is? Uh -uh. You know those things you jump on, right? Okay. The j jumpoline? Yeah. Like in the backyard, the big circle, you jump on it? Sure. Yeah, it was called the jumpoline until your mom jumped on it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't no tramp. <laughs> All right, you guys. Grinding it down, attempt number two, the first time we still were rubbing just a hair bit and so Kyle started grinding it down again. As you can see, we shaved off quite a bit. And so we're pretty confident that this is gonna be the one. We sanded it down, made sure there's no rough edges. Um, we only did it in a very specific spot because that's the only place it's rubbing at. The whole motor cradle doesn't need to be grinded down. And so we're pretty confident that this is gonna be the one. All 
All right, you guys, we got the motor back into place and it fits. There's no rubbing, there's no touching. Kyle used this wiring that we have right here and used in the shape of the cradle. And he shoved that along the front of it. There's Kyle. And there's no touching, there's no rubbing, which means we're good to go. So next up on our agenda is marrying the transmission up to the motor and start getting the transmission mounts uh, mocked up. We're gonna hopefully use the same transmission mount as the donor truck, which will save us a lot of time on welding, things like that. Hopefully we can just do a little modification and get it bolted into place. So that's next up on the list. So there's nothing to it but to do it. All right, I'm gonna make Phil, Joe feel a little stupid. So he was updating you guys on the mount and I'll do a little bit better explaining on what we were checking and why certain things are a little crucial than others. Not make it feel stupid, but it's funny. So let me get underneath there. So our biggest concern with this mount right there is we actually broke it because the it was hitting against the back, not that it was hitting down. We have plenty of room up here. There's about half an inch of play between the top of the, the mount and the oil pan. The problem is this oil pan where it starts to come down, it is actually hitting the back corner and the back side of the plate, just barely in this, in this section right here where we had marked. So what we ended up doing is grinding it down enough to where we can fit a piece of wire you know probably eighth inch wire all the way across the the back side and i'm happy with it because the engine's gonna create when it starts creating horsepower and torque it's gonna it's gonna want to turn sideways not forward and back so we're not have to you're not got to worry about the engine hitting front and back or just got to worry that hitting side to side because it's gonna be trying to torque um but anyway other than that, it fits great. I'm not gonna have, shouldn't have any issues with it, but if we do, we'll keep you guys updated. We have the transmission married to the motor, which means up next is the motor mounts. This is the cradle from the 2016, and we're gonna be able to use it. We're gonna base everything off of this left-hand side just so we can bolt it in place. And currently where the holes are at, we are at, what was it, Kyle? 18? Yeah, we're about, we're about an inch off exactly. So we're about, so about an inch off from center. But the crazy part is, is this hole right here lines up with our far left hole or bolt sorry and so we're going to be able to actually keep this one and then essentially we will put a hole for the other bolt right in here somewhere but the the total width does need to shrink a couple inches and so we're going to take it out of this side we're going to cut it down weld it back up and then essentially figure out where we need to bolt each side at and uh, hopefully that works hopefully it's kind of a one or two attempt process first up i'm going to take care of getting rid of all the air lines and the tank that'll kind of free up the frame uh, for us to get an accurate measurement of exactly where this uh, transmission uh, cradle needs to go. So I'm going to get going on that and Kyle's going to start getting some measurements and kind of figure out exactly where we need to cut down on the pre-existing bracket. So nothing to it but to do it.
light update time. Just removed the air tank, got the lines out of the way, removed all the brackets that were going to be in the way of the transmission cradle, and started cleaning up the frame and getting rid of all the extra lines that we're not going to need. So Kyle actually convinced me to go to hydraulic brakes instead of air brakes, which means we can actually get rid of all these extra lines that are just tucked away in the frame. So that also means on the firewall, we can get rid of all the excess lines that we're not going to need anymore because obviously that is to the air brakes. So up next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the firewall clean out all the dirt, kind of get rid of all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to go help Kyle over there who started cutting down the 2016 cradle for the transmission. And once he's done with that, he'll weld it up and then we'll start test fitting it. So nothing to it but to do it. There you go guys, here is our transmission cradle. Kyle has been working hard on this guy. He added two more bolt holes. So I originally thought that we were gonna be able to use this one 
and just make another one here. It didn't line out that way, so Kyle had to drill out two new bolt holes, and uh, this is what we had to cut out. Four or five inches out of the middle. So essentially, we're shrinking it down to fit the frame of the F750. So next thing Kyle's gonna do is he's gonna weld it all up, and then we're gonna be able to put it back into the truck and mark where all of our bolt holes will go. And hopefully it works. Um, hopefully it's a little bit better than the, or the motor cradle. So we only have a couple attempts at this, but I'll let you guys know how it works and uh, nothing to it but to do it. So Kyle just finished spraying down his welds and raw metal uh, to prevent any rust in the future. So this cradle is now ready to go. We test fitted it and it fits perfectly. So up next what we have to do is we're going to get into place exactly where we want it. And Kyle is going to uh, drill out some holes so we can actually use the factory bolts and nuts and the whole mounting system, um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, to keep it from the factory 2016 uh, truck. So the only difference that we're going to run into is when we mount it, the transmission height is a little higher than factory placement, which means we're going to have to get some spacers and longer bolts of the bracket. If you see those right there, uh, which isn't a big issue. It's just something we're going to have to grab and it's not the end of the world. So we're going to get this in place, start figuring out where to drill some holes, drill some pilot holes, and uh, there's nothing to it but to do it. Alrighty, update time. We have the transmission cradle in. It's nice to use a factory cradle from another truck because it looks really nice and clean and like it's meant to be. All we had to do is drill some holes, make sure they lined up, and it's in there. So next thing we have to do is there's a height discrepancy between obviously the 2016 and this F750. So if you can see there's a little bit of space between where the transmission needs to be and where the mount is right here so what we're going to do next is we're going to get the transmission in the exact place it needs to be and then we're going to come back and get a measurement between there to figure out what kind of spacers and what kind of length bolts we need in order to mount this transmission completely up so that's next up on the agenda there's nothing to it but to do it
Kyle just finished up adding some spacers to our transmission bracket. Check these bad boys out. The Masta. So that'll give us the adequate amount of spacing in order for our transmission to fit where it needs to fit. And uh, we're gonna go test this out and uh, let you guys know how it looks. All right, you guys, we finally got this transmission cradle in place. Got the transmission resting with no crane, no cables, nothing, no chains. So it's finally in place and we're ready to move forward. As you can tell, it looks pretty damn good. It's nice being able to use a factory 2016 motor or transmission cradle and just mocking it up a little bit. Now, unfortunately, this transmission doesn't sit perfectly in the center of this vehicle. We're about a half inch off to the left. Um, Kyle and I talked about it. Obviously, it's not the most ideal thing. Obviously, we didn't try to make it off center, but it is what it is, unfortunately. We're not gonna hide it. We're not gonna lie about it. We're gonna come tell you guys kind of what we did wrong. But luckily, we have some U-joints for the drive line, so it should match up. Um, we're actually gonna skip this mount right here and head back. I don't know if you can see that back there. But Kyle feels confident we'll still make it work, even though it's shifted over a little bit. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, and we'll, we'll have to move forward and make do with what we have. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's episode. We finally got the transmission and the motor in their final resting places. They're completely bolted down, which means now we get to work on getting the other parts and components of the motor into place, such as the coolant system, starting to figure out how to mount that into the vehicle. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. So. First off, this guy came to work on his truck today. Look at the fucking shoes he's wearing. <laughs> there ain't nothing to it but to do it, boys. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video. Yeah.